in 1949, the United States introduced the C-119 Flying Boxcar Twin-Engine Transport Aircraft into service. As a high-production transport aircraft, it has proven its value in multiple combat situations. However, the designers did not limit themselves to this model. In addition to subsequent modifications such as the C-82A, they also proposed a very interesting aircraft called the XC-120. Friends familiar with American aircraft naming conventions can determine from the X at the beginning of its name that it is just an experimental aircraft. In fact, people have been searching for better cargo compartment design methods for transport aircraft since the 1930s and 1940s. The goal is to allow the aircraft to better utilize its transport capabilities and carry larger sized cargo. The XC-120 has a similar purpose, but it incorporates the concept of detachable containers proposed in the 1940s. What is a detachable container? It is a separable cargo compartment, similar to today's modular design. The aircraft retains only the necessary structure, such as the fuselage, power system, and operating system. Cargo compartments of corresponding sizes are designed based on the aircraft's structure, these compartments can be similar to shipping containers or have seats like passenger cabins. Basically, whatever is needed can be used, just like a semi-trailer hauling goods. The front of the vehicle remains the same, while only the items being transported and the flatbed carrying those items change. The original C-119 transport aircraft had a high-wing, twin-boom configuration, with the engine nacelles extending rearward into twin vertical tails. The advantage of this design is that it provides a larger internal space. The aircraft has a tricycle landing gear, with the main gear located below the engine nacelles and the nose gear located under the front of the aircraft. The XC-120 chopped off the lower half of the C-119. Its main fuselage retains about one-third of the upper portion to accommodate structures such as a five-person cockpit. The lower portion of this half fuselage is flat, with interfaces for mounting cargo containers and equipment for lifting and lowering the containers. It can attach specially designed cargo compartments, which can be streamlined to reduce drag and can be detached from the aircraft upon arrival at the destination. Although the cargo compartment issue has been resolved, the aircraft no longer has a nose gear. Therefore, the designers modified the original main landing gear structure, enlarging the cargo bay and adding a smaller forward-deploying dual-wheel landing gear. In other words, the XC-120 became a four-point landing gear aircraft. So, what are the advantages of this unique design of the XC-120? First of all, it is based on the redesigned C-119, and many parts are interchangeable between the two models, allowing for shared production resources and reducing costs. In practical use, the aircraft can carry a variety of cargo compartments. It can transport cargo in container-like compartments and then return light after delivering the goods, which is economical and cost-effective. It can also transport field hospital kits and command posts designed as cargo compartments. It is useful for both military and civilian purposes. Many people even had imaginative ideas, believing that it could carry a huge strategic weapon as a bomber. In short, many people had high hopes for it and proposed many unconventional usage scenarios. However, compared to traditional transport aircraft, the XC-120 has several unavoidable flaws, most of which stem from its detachable cargo containers. The cargo containers are both its shining feature and its problem. In other words, without the cargo containers, the XC-120 is just a five-person useless aircraft, almost losing its transport capability. To use it, the airports where it may take off or land must be equipped with these cargo containers, which invisibly increases the cost of use, making it less convenient than conventional aircraft models. On the other hand, these cargo containers are individually designed and not integrated into the aircraft's structure. The cargo being transported is also not fixed. These dual uncertainties result in changes in the aircraft's center of gravity and other aspects, which can interfere with flight control. 
Any design is inevitably prone to accidents, and the reliability of the connection between the cargo containers and the aircraft is also uncertain. After all, even fighter jets have experienced incidents of detached auxiliary fuel tanks. Moreover, the XC-120 carries such a large cargo container. In conclusion, the XC-120 is a somewhat contradictory aircraft. Its advantages and disadvantages are distinct. It underwent numerous ground and flight tests in 1951 and 1952. By 1953, the U.S. military had abandoned plans for mass production of this aircraft, citing its many inherent flaws and ambiguous characteristics in certain aspects. The XC-120 transport aircraft has an empty weight of 18,136 kilograms and a maximum takeoff weight of 33,147 kilograms. It has a length of 26.37 meters, a height of 8.4 meters, and a wingspan of 33.3 meters. It is powered by two 3,500 horsepower R3350 engines with a maximum speed of 476 kilometers per hour and a cruising speed of 342 kilometers per hour. Its maximum ceiling is 6,700 meters and it can carry a payload of 9,000 kilograms or 65 paratroopers, excluding the weight of the cargo container itself. Only one prototype was built.